absolutely right. And Bill Cosby said something similar about a decade ago. He, too, was pilloried. So it doesn't matter if you're black or white saying these things. The left doesn't want them said. They don't want the focus taken off of whites. You know, you look at the city. It, it lends itself to progressivism. The closer people live to one another, the more rules you're going to have. But somewhere along the way, progressive politicians began to run industries out of the cities, leaving behind a very wealthy elite. Well, who gets affected by that the most? Poor people, working class people. When the jobs go away, it's not the fault of the people who are on the outside of that. I'll give you a great example of that. San Francisco's black population today is half of what it was in 1970. One of the most progressive cities in the world, or in America, I should say, has driven blacks out. It's made the city unlivable for particularly poorer blacks. The, and Gavin Newsom tried to come up with some task force to study this. And right. one of the complaints about that was, in some cases, blacks were choosing to live in the suburbs, and they mm -hmm. couldn't understand why. You mean a front yard, a backyard, safe streets? <laughs> Who would want that? Right. Um, but what, all of this has set urban populations back and yeah. back and back and back and then when when right now i think ryan should have defended himself better by saying who runs these cities it's not me right not only in terms of a lot of black mayors running these cities but city councilmen state legislatures police chiefs you know uh, school superintendents you go down the list a lot of the cities where blacks are faring worse are by and large run by blacks and that speaks to what i'm getting at in the book that political solutions are not what we should be pursuing here i think if one thing the obama presidency has proved it's that the black underclass needs a black man in the home much more than they need one in the white house these are problems that are not going to be solved by politicians and the problem here is that they are cultural problems and what the black underclass needs to do is to develop the behaviors and the attitudes and the habits that other groups had to develop to rise in American society and to the extent that government programs get but in wait, the wait, way of about, that. What about activists who right. profit from telling these people they're victims? They're part well, of the problem. Because the activist groups the and I don't want to name them, we can all go through the names, they seem to draw their wealth and right. their power from keeping these people right. As victims. And the, and the media plays a role because it continues to go to these groups to speak on behalf of the black underclass when the interests are divergent and have been for a long time. The, 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 the black elites are, in the, are, in, are serving their own interests, I should say. They are not serving the interests of the black underclass. And you can look at many issues to prove this. Everyone knows, every economist knows, that minimum wage hikes hurt blacks and the black poor in particular. Yet the black elites sell it as an anti-poverty program. But most people who earn the minimum wage um, aren't poor. And most people who are poor already earn more than the minimum wage. What the minimum wage does is reduce job availability. And that is what poor households need. The reason most poor households are poor is not because the people there aren't earning enough in wages. It's because they don't have jobs. No one in the house is working. So to the extent that a minimum wage hike reduces the number of jobs, you're not alleviating poverty. And if that's what you're raised with, that's what you know. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, you brought up uh, Bill Cosby. I don't care if it's Herman Cain or Thomas Sowell. Whenever there's a a, a black conservative or, or successful business person who says, this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. They're called a sellout. Right. They're, they, they, are, they are not called an example. Yeah. They are not, we look at Ben Carson, we say, hey, everyone's son should be just like Ben Carson, mm -hmm. no matter who, who, you, who says Clarence it. Thomas is another example. Okay, so the, they're, they're, they're out of arguments. All they have left is the name calling. But the evidence is the evidence. The programs that have been been put forth to help blacks have not done so. We have a long track record. Affirmative action is another example of this. It was intended, again, well-intentioned. We're going to build the ranks of the black middle class. We're going to help create more black college graduates. Well, when California ended racial preferences in higher education back in 1996, black college graduation rates went up by more than 50 percent. This policy had been, in effect, reducing the number of black college graduates that we otherwise would have had. You know, Ward Connolly, who's been on this program, he's actually a friend of the program, he pointed out back then that if you're just putting people in college because of the color of their skin, there's no guarantee they're going to graduate. Yes. You've got to find the people who are going to graduate. Yes, let's organically find blacks and Latinos who will attend the California public universities and graduate them. Don't put people in to fail. That makes it worse. But the agenda of the left is diversity. It's making the college catalog look like America. It doesn't matter whether these kids graduate. It's whether the freshman class is color-coded properly. That is the agenda of the left. And that's, by and large, the problem, that they have this vision of America. 
And it, in their vision of America, they see equal outcomes. But nowhere in history do you find equal outcomes. What the government can do, what our policymakers can do, is to ensure equal opportunity. Then it is up to groups to take advantage of that opportunity. What about school choice? Because that is the big one. I mean, he